My name is Dion, and I'm a mediator for the LA community, trying to prevent gang violence. Um, and I see a situation going on, and it's my job. I feel it's my obligation to step in, try to get some resolution. I'm here to talk about what's going on in the neighborhood. I grew up in this neighborhood, so it's very dear to my heart. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, look at it. It's like you could walk out your door, Black-owned businesses, stores, supermarkets, you know, just entrepreneurs, and that's like a beautiful thing. I, I have good memories growing up in this neighborhood when, when I was young. Um, I used to play, you know, hardball baseball, you know, when I used to wear the steel cleats. Um, I played uh, football, you know, we used to play against other neighborhoods. Once a year we have um, this parade, the Martin Luther King Day Parade, it's right on Crenshaw and Martin Luther King and um, just the whole community comes out. And that's where you really see the unity and the beauty in this neighborhood. And in school, we did a lot of fun things in school, you know, and uh, we're in a club, you know, in a different club at the Boys and Girls Club. We used to go camping and do a lot of fun things, about, you know, in camp and, uh, and go to Yosemite and things like that. So I grew up and it was real cool right here in this, this neighborhood. But now it's taking a, a turn, you know, it's taking a turn. I won't necessarily say for the worse, but there's more of an awareness now that there's a lot of gang activity and violence. It's very, the streets is very hot right now. There's a lot of people um, worried about killings. They realize it's not as safe to just be out in the streets like it used to be. You know, our kids can't play in the streets like they used to. You know, I used to ride my bike down the street, it was nothing. But now it's like you have to be more conscious of what, what you do, where you are. Go to the gas station. You can't go to the gas station. You know, it's not a neutral zone. That's, that's not something that kids should have to worry about. I want kids to be able to do what I did when I was young. I, I, I used to have the freedom to go walk to the park. I used to go to the show. I used to go shopping with my friends. We did fun things. And, and I feel now it's a danger to our kids right now these days. Uh, they're not able to walk to school safe. They're not able to go to the park safe and places they want to go safe to their girlfriend or boyfriend's house or visit their family. I think it's, it's a, an issue that we need to address. I think now we're, um, we're at like a, a, a pivotal point right now. You know, there wasn't as much, um, there was killing before, there was. But now it's to a point where people don't want it to happen. You know, people are tired of innocent uh, uh, individuals getting killed and they want to do something, but they just don't know what to do exactly. You know, they're, they're, they're willing to put guns down, but they're not just going to do it. You know what I mean? So that's why this is the time. I think this is the perfect time, the perfect moment for me to get in and, and, and help come to some type of resolution. So what I did was I called Johnny. Johnny has a lot of influence in the Latin community. A lot of influence, he's very respected amongst the Latin gangs. And I called him and I said, Johnny, you realize that there's a situation going on. There's a, basically a war going on. And I think that we need to step in and mediate, do some type of intervention. And he just agreed with me. So now we're just gonna take it to the tables. And um, I told him, yeah, I would, you know, because I feel that, you know, I love my community, you know, and I, I wanted to see it not get out of hand, you know, and, and there's a lot of really violence right now going on. Uh, and I don't want the young innocent people getting hurt and families getting hurt. So for that reason, I want to get down and sit down and talk to him and dialogue and see how could we do, what resolution we could come out of this in agreement. I'll tell you what I think is going to happen at the mediation. I think there's going to be a lot of um, anger, a lot of animosity, a lot of frustration, a lot of rage. You know, if we don't talk about it, there's going to be a lot of bloodshed. You know, I, I feel that, that we don't get down to 
sit down and talk about what's going down, you know, it's going to get really serious. I think there's going to be a lot of questions that need to be answered, a lot of opinions that need to be heard. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to put it all out there. You know, it's good that we have both sides, you know, a Latino and an African-American uh, mediating it because it's going to be able to have the trust amongst both because don't forget, we're going to have leaders from the both neighborhoods. If they come to an agreement, I think that the other side will uh, follow through. I'm respected with, with my Latino uh, neighborhood and he's respected with his African-American neighborhood. So we're going to come out of this, I think, uh, uh, hopefully uh, with some good results. I think that um, it has to be their own will. You know, I can't dictate the outcome. I can't say this is what should happen. I have to basically have them say this is what they want to happen. And then it's more than likely it's going to come, you know, together. But that's the only thing that we can hope for. We can only hope that they um, feel a need and they understand the urgency of the situation and they understand that this is something that they want to have an influence on. And that's the only way it's going to have a good outcome. I think they will show up. I think they will show up.